Uh, let me turn the air conditioner off in the next room before I forget. All right. Tim sometimes needs air conditioning because he's so hot when he's podcasting. I can hear you, you know. That's <laughs> I heard that. I... <laughs> I heard that. Oh, hang on. Wait, one second. Hey, is everything all right? We're just recording, but I was just answering in case it was an emergency. Sometimes Brady's wife calls when we're on air because he's so hot. Okay, I'll call you back. Okay, bye. Uh, okay. So, did you win tennis just now? Yes, it was social tennis. I won both sets, two sets, 7-5, seven, 7-5. Five, seven, five. Oh, quite close then. And I won all three sets at men's night last night. Every time you win, you go up a court, and I went up all the courts, all the way to the top court. I was on fire. What do you do? You play a set, and if you win that, you play another set with someone else? Is that how? Yeah, the two winners go up a court, and the two losers go down a court, and you split. So if you win, you and your partner go up a court, then you become opponents against two people on the court above. Uh, so you move up and down the courts, and you're constantly splitting. So I've won five consecutive sets. In fact, no, I've won eight consecutive sets because the day before that, I also won three. But that makes up for the fact. We also have like a tournament like at the tennis club. In that, it's like a knockout tournament. So everyone gets a partner and you get paired up and it's like, you know, you go through the ranks. Me and my partner got uh, paired up against two really good players. And we were, it was 4 all, so we were doing all right, but they were just about to crush us. And then one of them got injured and they had to like forfeit. So we went through to the next round, but then we went through to the next round against the club champion and the club coach, and it was an absolute demolition. Oh, dear. We got done 6-love, six 6-1. Six we got on our knees and celebrated when we won our one game. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so dear. after after being absolutely humiliated and not, and crushed in the, in the club tournament, I've now won eight consecutive sets. I'm on fire. These are all doubles matches, though, yeah? These are doubles, yeah. I prefer playing singles for fitness, but doubles is easier and it's more of a social thing at the club. So I play a lot more doubles. But th- like those, these ones I've been winning are more people, you know, my standard. Nice. <laughs> but when, but as when I got, when I got, when I get I accidentally have to play someone who's really good from the upper upper echelons, I'm I'm reminded of my standard. Right. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I feel, I, I, feel I, I wonder, I feel like we've walked into the third podcast appearance of my idea of mediocrity. Suddenly we're talking about yeah. <laughs> mediocrity for the third podcast in a row. I am a mediocre tennis player, but I'm looking forward to playing you when I come to Australia. Yes, well, that will determine if I am also a mediocre tennis player or a bad tennis player. <laughs> I will be very, very disappointed if you beat me at tennis. I know. I know. How will you be? <laughs> and <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I feel like I will be outmatched as I have in all sporting endeavours that we've engaged in together, with the exception of the swimming carnival. But <laughs> I, <laughs> but I'm playing a fair bit of tennis myself, and I'm. Um, we'll see. I, I'm doing all right, but then when when it, whenever the person I'm playing with just puts their foot on the accelerator just a little bit, I go, oh crap, oh yeah, no, <laughs> you know they've been going a bit easy. What's your strength and your weakness on the tennis court? Uh, I think my my weakness has been my return of serve, and I've been tr- working really hard on that, particularly the backhand return of serve, and I'm I'm feeling much better about that now. And I have a, I have a pretty strong forearm now. I think that's that's you know sort of forehand. Yeah, what did I say? I think you said from whom, <laughs> from, <laughs> right. or something like that. <laughs> Sorry, that's Dutch. <laughs> I, I sometimes right. speak in Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of rapping. <laughs> Bit of spontaneous rapping. <laughs> My my forearm. Um, well, of all the things I do, like every other human being on earth, my pretty standard medium pace forearm is my strength. But it's your forehand, not your forearm. Oh, did I say it again? For yes, yes my forehand, my forehand. I wonder yes. why I'm saying forearm. Maybe because I have such I bulging biceps. And it, um, it could be that. forearm. I hope mm. your biceps aren't on your forearm, man. No, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know today, as we record, the exact day, not the day of release, but the day we're recording, mm. is our six-year anniversary since the first episode of Unmade? Huge. Wow. Incredible. Even <laughs> And our listeners are um, even more amazed. I love it. And I'm amazed that it's gone this long and that people enjoy mm. it so much. And it's such a joy. Especially in Latvia. Indeed. Indeed. Have you monitored any... Um, 
tracking of, of listenership in, in Latvia? Has there been a spike? Well, I just had a look because obviously there was that moment where we briefly became the number four comedy podcast in Latvia. And if you haven't bought one of our T-shirts commemorating that, I'll put a link in the video description. Yes. Uh, and, but, and stickers and mugs. So I went and had a look just before recording to see where we were on the comedy list. And we were not in the top 100. What? We've, we've plummeted. Yes. <laughs> we've gone backwards. Yeah. Maybe they don't like us focusing on them and marketing to them and mentioning them. That, that's turned them off. We've, maybe we came on too strong. Maybe the T-shirts were a bit much. I don't know. <laughs> we came on too hard too early. Like a first date where you go in for a little peck or something and it's like, oh, no, I've stuffed it up. No, exactly. So I don't, I don't know if we're getting a second date. But I did like the thinking of uh, Kevin Maloney, who on Twitter slash X said that uh, he would be switching his VPN on his computer to Latvia when he does all future downloads of the podcast, thus tricking the internet into thinking he's in Latvia and boosting our Latvia stats. So if you have a VPN on your computer or your phone, just can you sneakily switch it over to Latvia just before you download your unmade podcast? Help boost our Latvia stats. That's a great idea. Let's hope we don't melt down some switchboard in Latvia because... <laughs> <laughs> no. Something's being diverted. I actually tried to get us a VPN sponsor for this episode, so I would, would now be able to say, and why don't you download this VPN with this code and, you know, use oh, yeah. it? Because I thought this is a m marvellous marketing opportunity. I couldn't find a VPN that was willing to sponsor us today. Ah, gosh. They, uh, they, weren't, they weren't having us. Did you tell us we've been going for six years? <laughs> yeah, six years. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it would take. Maybe more listeners. I don't know. Maybe. That wouldn't hurt. That certainly wouldn't hurt. So, uh, so I'm not recommending any particular VPN. Just use the one of your choice. Indeed. And switch it over to Latvia. What's six year anniversary? I wonder what it is. Like, you know, you know, it could be cardboard and there's all these different materials. There's not one for every year, though, though. Isn't it only milestones? Five, 10, 15? I'm looking it up. Six year anniversary. Iron. Ooh. Because it symbolizes the strength of a couple's relationship and the strength of each partner. You want to give gifts with iron accents, apparently. Like swords? Or sugar. I've seen someone else that says sugar. That doesn't seem right. It's certainly easy to give as a gift. I mean, I think we have enough sugar between us. Iron would be good. What well, iron? You want a sword, dear? That would mm. be your preferred iron gift? Hmm. Hmm. What would you like? Yeah. Uh, I'd like a sword, too. We, then we could cross yeah. swords. Oh, that'd be great. We, we could. We could have a duel. Imagine that, like, for our final episode, we have a duel to the death with to the iron death. swords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. The one who the one who lives has the responsibility of uploading the episode. <laughs> you better hope it's me because you don't know how to do yeah, it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if the podcast just stops one day, people, it means we had that duel and Tim won. That's right. And then couldn't upload the episode. That's, that's right. And I'll say, I'll say that the uh, podcast in a bottle that counts as our last one. That's out there, folks. If you can find it, good luck. Who do you think would win a sword fight between us? Uh, well, look, I'm a little bit taller. I, I think yes, you're fitter and musclier and kind of more sporty, though. Um, You'd give it a big swing. I think if it, I think you might win it like early with a couple of early swings, but mm. if you don't win it early, I'll, I'll probably win it from there with a bit of agility and a few. Because I'd like just prod. I'd like sneakily yeah. prod you and run away. Whereas you'd be going for the big beheading. Yeah, there would be like in every sword fight in every film. It, Ever There's like the guy who's sort of, it looks like towards the end he's really on top and he's doing big cuts and I chop your sword in half and then you drop your sword and you're on the ground and I just, but mm. then I'm, I'm overconfidently raise my sword to bring it down on you. Oh, yeah. And in that moment, and I pull a little dagger from my boot or something. Yeah, yeah. And you jab me yeah. and I go, oh, and then I fall oh. backwards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how it all goes. I like, I like in your fantasy of even in your in your fantasy of our sword fight, I win. <laughs> yeah, but, but I, because I, I think I look more majestic and awesome. Right. <laughs> like you're still right. little, you're like a little guy with a pencil going, yeah, <laughs> jab, yeah, jab, I jab. I sort of cheated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jab, jab. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I look great but lose. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> It's me. I'm swashbuckling. When I go and tell your wife and daughters what happened, I'll say, he looked good. He looked awesome. I stabbed him in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> jab, jab. 
<laughs> That's right. I go down like, what's his name in Platoon? Remember that dying scene in Platoon? Oh, yeah, Willem Dafoe. Yeah, mm. yeah. It'll be one of those. Mm. That's, a, that's a good way to go. Uh, got, got some parish notices here, Tim. Uh, we had, a, had quite a few messages about toilets and bathrooms and restrooms after the idea of reviewing toilets. Oh, yeah, yeah. Iliad said the restrooms at Bucky's, which is a chain gas station in Texas, are always pretty spotless. It's even part of their advertisement, too. You see billboards with stuff saying potty time and they sell bumper stickers with holding it till Bucky's written on them, which, of course, I bought one. So there's a chain of uh, gas stations in Texas that market themselves on having good toilets, which I think is really clever. Yes, indeed. Yes. Mm. Full respect. Absolutely. Uh, Chris Schreier wrote, Best toilet for me is in the lobby bar at King Edward Hotel in Toronto. The actual toilets have their own fully enclosed spaces rather than stalls. Big, solid, hardwood doors, well ventilated, beautifully appointed and decorated. Just remember to bring cash to tip the attendant, because there is one, and he will pass you delightfully soft hand towels, dust down your jacket if needed, adjust your tie, and let you know if anything in your fit or look is amiss. It's worth a fiver for sure. Now, that is something that I've seen in films many times, but have never encountered in real life, and that is a man working in the the, the bathroom doing this oh, kind of work. I see that. I've seen that in quite a few nightclubs. They often pass you a towel and give you a little spray of cologne or something. I, I see that in nightclubs in the UK sometimes. Oh, no. that's Well, I think maybe it's very rare in Australia, but perhaps also in the classy establishments that I don't get into, the high-class hotels. Mm, I don't think I'd be comfortable with a man adjusting my tie in the bathroom. I wouldn't want someone that much in my personal space in mm. the toilet because mm. the toilet is a place where... I like my distance. Mm, mm. I like, you know, you know, yeah. And where people tend to keep their distance from you as well, man, I think. Hmm. 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 I think it's right. Uh, Now, I made a a glib comment about petrol station toilets not being very clean because they are frequented by truck drivers. You said, I better be careful in case we have truck drivers listening. Well, you know what's coming. This is from, oh, I I don't know how to say this username. Topopotomopolopo. Ot, something, I don't know. But anyway, they said, as a truck driver myself, whenever I go to truck stops or service stations for a toilet break, I try to keep things as neat and tidy for others as I would keep my own house. However, what Brady said about truckers is a grossly flattering understatement. (laughs) Truckers are among the most degenerate, foul and intentionally antagonistic people that walk the earth. We are lucky that the station employees do as good a job as they do. Otherwise, their toilets wouldn't be as nice as they are. Oh, dear. So, oh well. there you go. (laughs) Confirmation from a truck driver, even if that truck driver tries to do the right thing. There's a podcast idea, talking to truck drivers. Mm. They're forever driving and talking to one another on their CBs and and all that kind of stuff, and they'd have all sorts of stories, little rituals. I always was a bit envious of them when I was young and I was catching like a coach somewhere Mm. because you'd get off at a a truck stop and there's all that really cool junk food to eat and there was lots of trucks Mm. there and it's like, oh, man, they get to go to this cool takeaway place for every meal. And you know what I mean? Like, I mean, apart from the bathroom, those places are Awesome with the Bay Marie with yeah, Dim Sims yeah. and Chick Chico rolls and chips, burgers. Uh, oh. You you said it, man. My brother in law's a truck driver. I'll uh, I'll pick his brain. Maybe we'll get him on sometime. Oh, absolutely. Because I know they do these little things. You know they're like, you know, like they toot and signal each other in different ways, and they know when this person's here. Yeah. And there's that whole CB culture. I think it's different in Australia because, you know, you're out on those big empty roads and you just occasionally see another truck. So there's a bit more camaraderie. I think in the UK where there's just motorways everywhere and a billion trucks, there's probably less camaraderie because there's just so many of them and it's so dense. Right. You lose that. You lose that, you know, uh, lonely moment where you meet another one coming yeah. the other way. Oh, right. Okay. They, they, mm. In the UK, they call them lorries as well, don't they? A lorry. Yes. A lorry. Which just reminds me of like a quaint English children's book. You know, the man in the lorry yeah. came along. It's just so quaint, like a yeah. little bright red yes. fire engine and all that lovely Englishy kind of infrastructure. It's lovely, you know. Yes, that's not what it's like. No. Right. 
<laughs> also, by the way, a lot of people asked about the toilets that I discussed uh, in the Maldives and also the wallpaper in a toilet that my wife and I photograph. Just to let you know, I shared pictures of both of those things on Patreon. I always put a few extra bits on Patreon as little little treats. So if you're a Patreon supporter, go along to our page, patreon.com slash unmadefm, and you can go and see that wallpaper in the toilet that we really liked and the posh Maldives toilets. Little bonus material. From as little as a dollar an episode or dollar a month? Yeah, yeah, but we'd prefer like three maybe. Three, but nice. you know, generous. You can do what you want. You, you can, can do what you want. You, you, you can. That's yeah. right. Yes. But don't start low, man. Don't like. Don't don't say the low one first. Well, I <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, you can. From a, you could just say from as much as a hundred dollars an episode. Well, you can that, this material. if you <laughs> or one dollar as well. <laughs> well. Pay what you think it's worth. This is like every every. No, no, no! Don't say that. No, <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> We'll end up owing That's money. less than a dollar. We'll end up in debt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. All right. We also talked about breakfast and how, you know how you, people are willing to have the same thing for breakfast all the time, but they won't have the same thing for dinner? Mm. Well, I heard from Global Librarian Horse, who said, <laughs> on the topic of why we accept having the same thing for breakfast, but not dinner. My girlfriend lives a very stressful life in this regard. She wants something new for breakfast every day. I, as someone who has eaten the same cereal for 950 of the last 1,000 days, am, of course, horrified by this. I just agonise over the moment every day where she goes, what will I have for breakfast today? Alas, it means that every once in a while when she makes too much breakfast for herself, I get a bite of something other than cereal in the morning. Imagine having something different for breakfast every morning. She must enjoy cooking. You've got to prepare it. Breakfast, you want something quick. You don't have to spend too much time on. I just can't think of that many things you could eat for breakfast. Well, unless you bring in the cuisine from other meals. I mean, you could make up a stir fry, for instance, but it just seems mm. all wrong. Mm. Fish, don't know. You know, don't know. steak, barbecue. I like a bit of smoked salmon for breakfast. Smoked salmon and egg. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. no. Absolutely. Yeah, the smoked salmon's good. I yeah. interchange that with bacon um, too. Mm. I sort of do a bacon day, a smoked salmon day, and then a day with nothing because there's lots of, um, you know, like stuff in each of them that means that you don't want to have them every day mm -hmm. with my eggs. But eggs are good for everyday eggs. Do you ever have cereal? Never. If I have cereal, it no. will be a late night snack or a fun thing in the afternoon. I never have cereal mm. for breakfast. No. It's too cold and weird for breakfast time. It's I, like, I, I mean, I like, I like cold cereal for breakfast, but... No. No, stop it. All right. Now, last episode, we, we had the mid-episode wrap. Uh, and I just wanted to give credit to the person who made it, because I didn't actually have the wrap yet at the point that we were recording, so I couldn't thank him. But thanks to Rich for making the wrap. Here's a little reminder of what it sounded like. Jam, jam, here comes the man. I bet you never thought it'd be big in Japan. Dying arm with the Milo man. Funny in Latvia. Hot damn. Coming in hot. 18 in Kyrgyzstan. 33 in Oman. Hot damn. I want to start with a big hello. Yes, yes, yes. To the dinosaur Milo. Slow. Sugar on top. You better watch your back for the man in black. Out for the kill. He just walked around the block with a spoon of condensed milk. Hot damn. And you can email us, unmadefm at gmail.com, if you would like to submit your own rap to play mid-show. We'd, uh, we'd like to hear. We'd like to hear what you come up with. That is a great idea. We can just throw them in randomly throughout the episode. Throw them in. Fantastic yep. idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just well, a bit of a well, pause. Well, that, that requires people to make them for us. So, uh, you know, make one. And if you make one, you know, we, we, may, we may reward you in some way. So that one drew upon sort of our voices with some, you know, bits and pieces and mm. effects. Very skillfully done. Mm. Is that what you'd like other people to do? Or would you like them to rap themselves? I want people to do what they want to do. You can rap yourself. Just a, just a rap that just appears mid-podcast. Nice. What have mm. you got? What have you got in you? We want to hear it. Mm. Uh, unmadefm at gmail.com. That's the email address. Is that all the parish notices? Uh, I think it is. Yeah, that's, that's it for now. Yeah. Would you, you, do you want more? I mean, it's quite a lot. There are several here in our parish, like at Malvern Uniting. Like we have a quiz night coming up later in the year. That's very mm. exciting. Mm. There's a team organising right. that. 
So that's yeah. coming up. You can, so we're doing actual parish notices from your parish now. Yeah, yeah, we can do that too. Right. It is. It's really, it's really mm. exciting. There's a new community choir that started. Right. And like 18 people came to the first one, and that's very exciting. Nice. New choir. It's going to be a lot of fun. People from the community. Lots of fun. Did you go along? No, no, I didn't go along. No, I'm more of a soloist. I don't want to intimidate anyone that was there having a go for the first time. We have not talked yet. Speaking of you being a soloist, we have not yet talked about your little side hustle. Yes. <laughs> is it true? Is it true that you have been having singing lessons? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Been. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we mention that already? The- I don't think so. Wow. Why are oh. you having singing lessons? You're already a magnificent singer. I Well, this is true, yes. But, you know, it's a bit like why does Coca-Cola advertise? It's because if you're number one, you mm. want to stay number one. <laughs> 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 Look, I love to sing and I've never thought, mm. I, I, I don't really know any of the skills involved in singing, but someone, we have several mm. people who sing magnificently in our church and one of them has always said, you know what, I reckon you might have potential there the way you speak and the way your voice works. So Hmm. last Christmas, they actually gave me the Christmas gift of a, wasn't a singing lesson, it was sort of a vocal assessment. So going along with a proper singing coach and um, Hmm. doing some assessment. Basically, is it worth doing singing lessons? That kind of idea. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I did that. Uh, Surely someone who wants you to pay the money to give you lessons is going to say, oh, yes, you should definitely. I lessons. know. I was sceptical because I'm like, well, that's right. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's like asking, mm. you know, a, a, a carpet company, do you think we need new carpet? You know, it's like. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but this is a serious place and, and she's got, you know, like a master's degree, yeah. very skillful sort of person. And and I was like, okay, mm. what, why and how? And I could see what they meant. And I thought either way, I'm really enjoying this. And so I bought a bunch of lessons what did you have to do for the assessment? Like, give us a, an example of some of the things you had to do. Did you have to use your diaphragm? Yeah, I, I was waiting for that. That was I was so looking forward to, to that moment. I wanted to mention the diaphragm on a regular basis to show that I knew it existed from that Wonder Years episode. Right. But she didn't use that a lot. She talked a lot more about my phrasing and about my throat and about skill. You know how to go and hit notes and come in on the note rather than working up to the note and all those sorts of things. Mm. But okay. essentially, she got me to sing and then to try a few things and try a few songs. And then she's like, yeah, no, this is it. That's on key. You can you can sing in key if and then you can do this, yeah. this and this and this. That was thrilling to realise and to hear myself. So and she, go, you wow. passed. She signed you up. Yes. Yes. So mm-hmm. I I did about 10 lessons. Wow. Um, up until very recently. And yeah. I loved it. I mean, singing is just so much fun. And I learned a bunch of, I learned how to sing a few favourite songs, mm. a couple of, like a Crowded House song and a Sting song and a Harry Connick Jr. song and a few others. And um, I, I came a heck of a long way, actually, because you practice and you learn and you go, hang on, I'm holding that tune and I'm singing, you know, you record yourself, listen to yourself back and you go, I'm in key and all that. So I'm not a great singer, but I'm in key. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Hine. <laughs> having a sip of water what if, what's he going to hit us with oh no no hang on hang on for the patron supporters if you want to <laughs> <laughs> give us a li- give us a little taste and then maybe we'll put a bit more on patreon no no i think it's the other way i think i sing now and if you're a patron supporter you can go and you don't have to listen to it you can listen to some lovely <laughs> silence instead <laughs> an episode without tim's That's give right. us give us a little verse you want a couple of lines what could i well what I was your signature what was your signature song i haven't warmed up um, I did it, mm. it Had To Be You, but that's a very difficult song because it's got all minor things in it. Um, oh, what was the, there was the Crowded House, I've forgotten, what, what's the Crowded House song? Um, Somewhere deep inside, something's got to hold on you. And it's pushing me aside, see it stretch on forever. And I know I'm right. See, I, I went up to it. That's wrong. I'll try it again. And I know I'm right, right. For the first time in my life. You know, I'm, all, I'm a bit blurry there. It's not good. But and that's why I tell you, you better be home soon. There we go. 
So there we go. Another example. Once again, we've once again we've moved into mediocrity land. This is what we are doing with that was all right. a very that was pretty mediocre good. voice. So when you went higher there for a minute, the 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 limiter or whatever I've got on my Zoom cut you out. So you're obviously doing something that was just too awesome for the Zoom. Dogs are barking all the way down the street outside here as well. Really? <laughs> yes. Right. So it's not. A, I mean, there are good voices, but that you just. It's not that I've got a great voice at all, at all. But it means that you can sing. There's a difference between um, singing in tune and not singing in tune. Singing on key, in key, right? So being able to do that, and that's fun. And you can do. And if you can do that, then you can sing backing vocals, or you can sing something, and you can hold a note. And and what's end game for you here? What do you want to do with this skill that you're nurturing? I want to, in a non-embarrassing, oh, help out the band, be part of the band here in the church, which I enjoy. I do a bit of yeah. guitar playing, but I, I, you know, just sing along. We've got some great singers, so I don't want to spoil that. I want to be competent in my, you know, backing of of them. That would be good fun. I have a bit of another secret project in mind um, that I don't want to share because it's. Way too early, but I have a bit of I have a bit Ooh. of an idea in mind that that could turn Ooh. into something. Mm. Two piece feed album. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, no, I've moved on. I no. <laughs> just, I, really. I, mean, <laughs> I hate to announce the split here on air, but uh, <laughs> a bit like Simon and Garfunkel, things have turned a little bit different, and I'm I'm going solo. No, I right. I do have it. I have the idea of putting together a bit of a repertoire of a particular artist and doing a few very um, anonymous pub gigs to sort of just tune and see if something gets right. But that's a bit down the track, and um, I may go, may go back to the singing uh, teacher to craft that a little bit more. I'm just learning a few songs at the moment. Wow, a bit of a cover, a bit of a cover artist. I, 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 I've, I've said too much. You've drawn it out of me. You're like, <laughs> you're like Parkinson. You've, 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 you've got me to sh- overshare. If mm. you would like to have a guess at what artist Tim is no, going to cover it's... <laughs> in his next career, <laughs> send us a message. Or you could suggest someone you think Tim should cover. I pro- it's not Nick Cave, okay? Um, All right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not Nick Cave, and it's, and and it's neither is it Celine Dion. So those are two no. two I know that I thought you were. Does it start with B and end with Ono? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not, All right. nothing you two related. Or no, 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 no. Gosh, no. All right. All right. Well, I won't push you anymore. Mm. But I am. Uh, I am intrigued. Mm. Is it possible that you'll be doing it when I'm in Australia? Or no, is that too soon? I think that's too soon. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, I wanted to come along, and it, it, even if it wasn't too soon, I would say it was too soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Mm. Ideas for a podcast? Have you got one? I do, actually. Yes, I do. Mm. This is this is a it's it's not what I planned to do, but I got thinking on this beforehand while I was waiting, and I and I'm I'm really quite intrigued buy it and and want you to talk it through with me a little bit it's it's kind of about super forecasting i was reading this book i've been reading this book called think again by adam grant hmm. which is which is really quite good book about the power of knowing what you don't know which is sort of a title it doesn't mean anything basically it's how to how to argue it how to convince people how to argue how to have conversations that are persuasive rather than just um, being a prosecutor of of your point of view, and mm. but there's actually a small bit where he goes off on a bit of a tangent, and I thought that was particularly interesting, where he talks about people that try and predict the future. These are people who yep. try to forecast, and he he talks about a tournament that actually exists where people come together and they actually compete in terms of forecasting on a whole range of um, areas. And okay. he talks about an organization called Good Judgment that sort of hosts this and the range of people that are known as sort of super forecasters. They're not particularly intelligent mm-hmm. people. No, they're not geniuses or anything, but they have strategies that have a better than average and it's kind of better than experts ability to, to forecast the, the future and events in the future. 
Give me an example. Well, you know, the people who picked that Trump would win the presidency against uh, Clinton, you know, when it was sort of didn't Mm. seem very likely at all. But then they also, Mm. the competition comes down to really concrete things such as who's going to win the next World Cup? Will the current president of Iran still be in office in six months? In the following year, will this individual or this company face criminal charges for an accident involving a self-driving vehicle? You know, these are sorts Mm. of examples that are very tangible. I went looking up this idea of super forecasting and there's like this other book that's come out about that, which which is the, called Super Forecasting, The Art and Science of Prediction. And it talks mm. about kind of, it has like four attributes of people that are kind of super forecasters. And then it has like a, a list of principles of six points on how you can, or, you know, methods that people use to to super forecast. And that's all really, really interesting. So- Tell me your podcast idea. Yeah, the podcast idea is it could be as simple as calling it predictions or forecasting, but basically getting people on to talk. Firstly, you could get on some of these people and talk about them, but I imagine that podcast already exists. But I like the idea Mm. of getting people on to make some predictions and they could be as small, and this is a task that maybe you and I could have, make a prediction about something that would happen before the end of this episode, before the end of this week, and before the end of the year. Hmm. You know what I mean? You could People could come and just speak about that way, th- those kinds of things, and, and talk about why, what their rationale, which is really the interesting bit. Just simply pulling something out of the air is not that interesting. But the thought processes are interesting. And I'm really interested in this idea of super forecasting and the I. And, and the fact that people actually compete in forecasting. Why is it called super forecasting? What's the difference between super forecasting and just like forecasting stuff? They're taught super forecasting tends to be people who are proven in this area and an analysis of those people and how they go about doing it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's more that you are a super forecaster if you're good at it. That's right. Are you good at forecasting stuff? I think every. This is one thing I think everyone likes to think they are, but I'm not necessarily. Oh, I don't. I think I'm terrible. Well, <laughs> I don't think I'm particularly good at it either. Mm. I, I'm always left with that feeling that when something happens, that you go, oh, sh-, there's a feeling that goes. Part of me knew that was going to happen, and yet I didn't let <laughs> myself believe it was going to happen. But, <laughs> but that's you can't trust that sort of reflective thinking no. either, can you? Because. Hindsight. Yeah. Or hindsight in your case. That's right. Hindsight. Mm. Absolutely. No, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I mean, I think people who are really good at it must already work in the gambling industry or they're like, you know, actuaries and work in insurance and stuff like that. But it's definitely, I'm definitely terrible at it. What do you think makes someone good at it? Like, I wonder if it's they're really analytical or they're like- They do talk about it here. They talk about four attributes this this book does. Like people apparently who- they're have the qualities of a super forecaster have like a philosophical outlook, which means that they are cautious and they're humble and non-deterministic. So they don't sort of attach their things to assert their, their ideas to a certain ideology. Like I know this is going to happen mm. because I believe this. They, mm. Their thinking style is open-minded, intelligent and curious, reflective and numerate. Their forecasting style is quite pragmatic and analytical, probabilistic, thoughtful updaters in intuitive uh, psycho- psychologically. So they do weigh, there's a lot of maths in this as well. So they weigh probabilities mm. and do a lot of data mm. analysis, which is quite cold, mm. but often makes a lot of sense in, in retrospect because everyone, most people just go with an intuition. Oh, I think this is going to happen or they're an outlier because they saw this one little fact. But when you actually, you know, sit down and, and look at the data and look at numbers and look at probabilities, Lastly, they have a work off, a, they have a work ethic, a strong work ethic. That is, they're highly systematic about the way they go about their forecasting. They're not just pundits mm. that sit back. They they pour and research. Um, yeah, they crunch the data. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's, that explains why you're no good at it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what are some things we should predict? Okay, one of the easiest ones is that I will forget to say the secret words from my daughters before the end of the episode. That is a reasonably safe prediction. Who's going to win the AFL football premiership in a few, in a few weeks' time? I haven't been following it closely enough to make that prediction, even though I'm in a tipping group, to be honest. Um, mm. So I'll say Collingwood. Collingwood is Tim's prediction. Yes. All right. When you and I play a set of tennis mm. in November, what will the score be in the first set we play? We, we need to play more than one set because I'm a second set specialist. 
Right. Okay. Well, you can predict both sets if you like. Mm. Which you you will, I'm going to believe that you have a stronger serve, and you will win. But then you you if I can get you angry, you will start making unforced errors on a regular basis, and right. that will be helpful for me. Um, mm. You will win the first set. Six two. Six two. Right. Six two. And mm. I will win the second set. Six five. Well, that's not an actual score that can exist, but all right. Like seven five. Or oh, sorry, seven five. Yes, yes. Mm. Seven five. All right, seven five. All right. We'll see. Watch this space. Do you have a prediction for the tennis? Our tennis match. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna predict that I will manage to win the first two sets, and I'm gonna predict six one six two. Right. <laughs> Hmm. You're probably more accurate, but I... Yes. We'll see. I don't know. You could be way better than I expected. No, I'm not. I'm almost certainly not. Hmm. But then, of course, I would say that now, wouldn't I? To lull you into a Hmm. false sense of security. All right. Well, we'll, maybe we'll record the match and put it on as a... uh, Put it on YouTube. Maybe we will. (laughs) (laughs) That's a big maybe. (laughs) There's nothing worse than watching video of yourself playing tennis. No. It really brings you back down to earth. Yes, I... (laughs) Yeah. I can imagine. Let's move on anyway. It's cool. It's good. It's good fun. It's a good topic. It was a good idea. That's a good idea for a podcast, Tim. I I predict that that is a good that that could be a good podcast to be made one day. Your use of the word one day sort of implies that it probably won't. I don't be think made. we'll make it. No, I don't, I don't think, think. I don't we'll think. We'll make it. I need. I need <laughs> I need a quicker payoff. Like I don't, I couldn't handle that podcast because people are predicting stuff, and then I'm like, "Well, are they right or they're not?" I don't. I have to wait a year to find out. There would be a pod. This would be a good podcast after it's been going for a year or two, and you can start going back to people's predictions. That's true. But and to it, start with, it'd be a bit boring. It's the sort of podcast you would almost want to make a year's worth, and then and then start putting them out and having a person back. You would only put it up when you have the, the second time, or it was in two parts. We recorded this half a year ago. Now we're here. Tell us how you came to that idea because it's you were right about that and wrong about that. But that takes patient yeah. podcast making, that's for sure. And that is not our cup of tea. So let's move on to something else. This episode has been brought to you by Hover, domain registrars extraordinaires. If you need to register a domain on the web, go to hover.com slash unmade. And that will get you 10% off your first purchase I register all my domains with Hover these days. I'm a very happy customer. Tim, I'm going to give you three pairs of domains, right? And for each pair, I say, Mm -hmm. you have to say which one Brady has registered and which one is still available Mm. for someone else to purchase. Are you ready? Is this because it will be, you've registered it, is it random or you've got, is this like, because I know you have a purpose for it. You decide. Oh, okay. Which one oh. does Brady own? Which one is available? Mm. Here we go. Omega Speedmaster dot watch or Brady Loves Lego dot toys. <laughs> <laughs> I know you like Omega Speedmasters as well, but surely that's not available. But it's either you own it or it is available. Those are the two options. I can't believe it. Gosh. I'm going to say that you have bought Brady Loves Lego Dot Toys. No. I have Omega Speedmaster Dot Watch. Wow. And as of the time and at the time of recording, Brady Loves Lego Dot Toys still available. If How you go is to that hover, still there? My go and get it. Me. Go Gosh, and get it. That's incredible. What about these two? You ready? Yes. Objectivity dot video. Yep. Or money for nothing dot guitars. Surely you own Objectivity because of. Um, well, but hang on a second. No, wait a second. It may be this. Yes. Hmm. Maybe that's somewhere else. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say you already own the first one. Objectivity dot video. Correct. I do own that. And money for nothing dot guitars is still available. That's incredible. That's still available. Wow. I know. I mean, goodness I me. All right. Last, last pairing. Yes. Do I own Richmond Football Club dot sucks <laughs> or spoon dot cards? I think you've bought spoon dot cards. 
I have bought Spoon Dot cards for our Spoon of the Week collector cards and Richmond Football Club Dot Sucks. I can't believe there's a Dot Sucks uh, yes. suffix, but there is. So Richmond Football Club Dot Sucks is still available if you want to stick it up, Tim, because Richmond Football Club is Tim's favourite team in Australian football. Oh, golly gosh. There's no need to buy that one. I mean, I'm really, if you're on Hover, you can buy something else. There's probably no need for that if one. If you're on Hover, you could buy Richmond Football Club Dot Sucks and then you could automatically redirect it to something like Tim's Twitter, right? <laughs> so if anyone then puts in Richmond Football Club dot sucks and presses return on their keyboard, <laughs> up pops Tim's Twitter page. Oh, Look dear. at that. That's the fun you can have. If you want to have some fun or you've got a serious reason to have a domain, go to hover.com slash unmade, 10% off your first purchase. It's a really easy web page to use. They're, they're a great business and they're a great supporter of the podcast. Thank you to Hover. Thank you, Hover. Fantastic. This is a time where we give a few prizes out to our Patreon supporters. Go on, Tim. Wait, give me the... Grab the guitar. Oh, here we go. He's got the guitar oh, out. Nice. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> nice. And he's got the singing voice to go with it. All right. An Australian nut unmade podcast key ring is being sent to Nina in Tasmania. You want me to sing something about Nina in Tasmania? Well, you got the voice. You've had the lessons. <clears throat> I'm not properly warmed up. I do apologise, Nina. I can oh, send something. Since when to do you warm up? You sing all the time without warming up. No, that's the war- that, but that that that's the warming up. That's me. That's me. That, that. <laughs> all right, Nina, Nina, oh Nina. That song's called Nina. All right. I liked it. Uh, And we're going to send some Spoon of the Week collector cards. Find out more at spoon.cards to... Now, this is interesting. Last episode, Ian Mook uh, from Scotland won some cards and he went on to our Patreon page and wrote, I can't believe the prize algorithm has smiled upon me at last. Well, Ian, the prize algorithm has smiled on you back to back weeks. You've won more cards. Unbelievable. That's crazy. Nice work. Fantastic. Look, your, your, your Patreon support is paying off. Ian from where? He's from Scotland, I think. Scotland. What Scottish songs are there? I don't know. And I would walk 500 miles <laughs> and I would walk 500 more. Hmm. Those are not the chords to that song. And Not feeling it? Not feeling it? Yeah. The Proclaimers, a Scottish, Scottish band. There's a lovely band called Bell and Sebastian that are a good band out of uh, Scotland. Yeah. Nice band. Mm. Yeah. Glass Vegas, I quite like. Right, okay. Mm. Oh, look at you naming bands. No, no, I'm <laughs> dropping, dropping, dropping music bombs. You wait till you hear the podcast idea I'm going to share. You're going to blow, blow your mind. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we also are sending Spoon of the Week collector cards to Gordon H. from the UK as well. Gordon H. Gordon H, Gordon H, Gordon H. Uh, Tobias from Germany. Tobias. 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 What's that song called? Tobias. Right. <laughs> and finally, we have Jacob from North Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, that's it. So here we go. This is a um, this is a song. That's what I was playing initially. A song about Carolina by Ryan Adams called "My Sweet Carolina." Mm. What's his name again? Jacob. Jacob. Jacob, oh, the sweetest winds they blow across the south. There we go. Nice. Love it. Thank you very much. Congratulations to those people. Uh, I'll be doing a big postal batch soon. So if you've won stuff in the last couple of weeks, uh, keep an eye on the post box. I'm about to do my big packaging day. And now it's time for... Of the week. 
Soons? Soons of the Week. Right. Which I learned in the last hour or so is Latvian for dog. Oh. Hmm. Right. So we're, we're really doubling down on our Latvia thing here. We want to win back the Latvians. Here's our Latvian Patreon supporter, uh, I think it's Courtney, saying, saying it for us. Soons. Soons. Uh, I, I really tried to dig up some information to do with dogs in Latvia. Mm. It wasn't that easy. Mm. Apparently, there's a movie theatre in, I think it's in Riga, called k which means like K-Dog, which sounds like a sort of a, a nickname that you would have. Mm. But the other thing I found out, and this was a real find and really saved my bacon for Soons of the Week, and that is that there's a dog breed called the Latvian Hound. Oh, Nice. That's uh, around the world. It's uh, yeah. They're mainly in Latvia. They're, it is rare to find them elsewhere. They're, but they're big in Latvia, obviously. They're a medium-sized hunting dog. Uh, they're sort of a. They're usually quite black with a bit of tan. I'll put some pictures in the usual places. They're not widely known outside of Eastern Europe and Russia. They're a smart, lively dog. A handsome breed. Oh yeah. Uh, they originated in the Duchy of Courland which is a sort of a, a historic part of Latvia in the West. And they used to be called, you know, back in the 17th century and around those times, uh, Courland Hounds. And their name was later changed to Latvian Hounds. I think in the 1970s that the name was changed. They look a little bit like, uh, like what we call a sausage dog, except with long legs. They have that sort of yeah. brown tan and face. Yeah. Smooth, beautiful. Yeah. What a wonderful hound. Trained to follow the scent of animals like deer and rabbits and wild boar and then drive them towards the hunters. I was, I'm looking at some of their ratings here on a dog website mm. and they are quite high energy, healthy, sociable, very trainable and have a decent lifespan. Sound like a great pet. A Latvian hound is this week's Soons of the Week. <laughs> nice. Wow. Yeah. I can hardly wait. To hear what next week's is. And now <laughs> I have asked for more Latvian words that rhyme with spoon, but right. uh, we'll, see, we'll see how much legs this, uh, this segment has. <laughs> Let's make no promises. <laughs> Lovely work. That's, that's another classic episode of Soon of the Week. Soons. I think it has to have the S. I think, I think the singular might have the S. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, okay. Yes, you're right. My Latvian, is, of the week. my Latvian is in early stages of development. It is, but, but you've um, come a long way. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, this week's idea for a podcast from me isn't coming from me. It's a suggestion from one of our Patreon supporters called Some Jeff. And I will read the idea as Jeff wrote it. Here's a music-related podcast idea that Tim might be into. Every week, review the top 100 or UK charts or number one singles of a particular year, but only the songs that are not about relationships, romance, sensual undertones. Pretty much anything having a lyric containing you or we should probably disqualify it. You then talk about what the song's about, how did it become so popular if it's not about me or you? You could get the artist to chime in on their reaction to their hit single in an ocean of breakup songs. You could discuss trends. Was a particular decade flushed with romance? Here are some examples from the 1980s. Eye of the Tiger, Another Brick in the Wall, 9 to 5. Hmm. What do you think of this, Tim? Discussing songs, but yet they can't be about love, romance, couples feelings is there a song that what's the first song that jumps into your head when you think about a popular song that isn't about love and you and me and we because one there was one that jumped into my head yeah well the one that came to mind maybe because you mentioned the 80s is the do they know it's christmas by band-aid the very famous fundraising song about poverty okay um in ethiopia that was the first one that came to mind yeah okay i think that would count yeah that would have that would count it's about like yeah. a global issue, a serious issue. Not, yeah. It's not yep. a lovey-dovey yep. song. What was the one that came to mind for you? The one that came into my head straight away was um, One Night in Bangkok. Uh, do you remember that song? I don't think I know that uh, song. It was like, it was on one, one of the first like hits of the 80s, 70s and 80s uh, tapes that I got as a kid. Hmm 
had it on had it on there and i never really knew what it was about it was quite a funky cool song it was quite a different song and it's actually about uh people playing chess no way uh, that's I, great I, you know i didn't really I, I never really realized until later in life it was actually used on a concept album and the subsequent musical chess which was you know a St- a stage show mm. but the song itself was a was a hit song as well it was very popular oh right uh, it topped the charts in many countries including south africa the netherlands west germany switzerland denmark and australia it peaked at number three in canada and the u.s in may 1985 number 12 in the united kingdom one night in bangkok was the one that came into my head one town's very like another when your head's down your pieces, brother. What else have we got here? Uh, I have more suggestions from some Jeff. Funky Town by Lips Incorporated. He says, in contrast, August 19, 2023 Billboard Top 100 probably has maybe five songs that fit this category. They're, they're, they are rare songs that don't deal with those topics. Don't deal with relationships or there are even songs like that deal with, you know, the passing of someone, you know, like a father or a brother. But that kind of gets a bit too close, doesn't it? Still, it's yeah, fraternal I think love. Maybe that's veering too. So it's got to be about something that's um, that's not. Money for nothing must count. Yeah, yeah. It mentions chicks, but not in a very loving way. Um, no, not in a loving way. No, no. <laughs> Yeah. I imagine there's quite of a few in the heavy metal area. There are a lot of, there's a strange mm. strain of heavy metal, which is more about sort of, you know, distant lands and quests and adventures. And, you know, I, there's all that <laughs> yeah. kind of genre, you know, the Lord of the Rings kind of genre of song. Yes. Um, yes. They are quite ridiculous, really. Um, <laughs> some of them in. in, in what about, or, of or here's one Rodeo by Garth Brooks. Yes, it's about the rodeo. But yes. even, even that's about the lure of the rodeo away from the relationship. Like it's like that's you, the rodeo is your mistress. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. So uh, he's got We Shall Be Free, which is more about issues and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, well I tell you, here's another. There's a, there's a subsection of this idea because. There is a, a lot of the songs that come to mind are more protest songs. If they're not about love, then they're all about uh, issues. Oh, yeah. Wind of Change. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> Scorpions. Nice. Yes. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> so there's, a, there's some Jeff. You have you have opened a can of worms here with Tim. Yeah, this, I can <laughs> I can see him. He's, he's come alive. <laughs> this this episode's going to go a lot longer than I originally thought. Uh, we're we're be here a while. Um, yeah. But it's interesting to think of other songs aside from that as well. They're about things. So it's not about an issue and it's not about love. It's just about some, mm. you know what I mean? Like a quirky thing, like my breakfast or yeah. um, driving yeah, driving a yeah. car or chess. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Um, mm. It's it, that, that I like that idea. Little Deuce Coop is about a car by the Beach Boys. But again, I think that's got maybe there's a degree of... Wanting to impress your lady and impress the girl. Yeah, there's a little... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That They all have that sort of slant. Like there's... Well, something like In My Room, which is about being in your room as a teenager and that being the whole universe and stuff. Nah, that's about angst and like... I think that... I don't think you can have that one. But it's angst... It's surfing USA. Oh, okay, yeah. Surfing USA, just about surfing? Or has it got... Has that got a bit of love and girls in it? I can't remember. It's hard. It's hard with the Beach Boys. You always feel like they're implying some loss or something. Yeah. Nick Cave must have some. Red Right Hand. That's not about relationships, is it? No, he does a lot of what's called murder ballads. So songs that are, mm-hmm. you know, well, like horror films, murder films or murder novels. He brings all that to music. So they're actually, some of them yeah. are quite violent and tragic in that kind of genre in his early days in particular. So, yeah, there's a lot of that there. There's a one that I, I've mentioned before, my favourite uh, song is by Nick Cave is called The Mercy Seat, which is about a guy on death row, you know. So that's just him yeah. thinking about that. That's not very lovey-dovey. Loads of Garth Brooks songs, Tim. Like, country music must be fertile for this because country, while country music does do a lot of, you know, love and stuff, there is also a lot of, like, other stuff, like, you know, uh, Alabama Clay. Yeah, yeah. Just about, you know, some old guy from Alabama and stuff like that. Like, country music songs sometimes would veer off into these weird areas. Nobody gets off in this town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The high school colours are brown. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We can go through our extensive Garth Brooks knowledge. Yeah, totally. Totally. Standing outside the fire is not about love or romance. No, about, no, you know, no, about defiance. It is, it is kind of worthy and living life to the full, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. We are the champions by Queen. It's just about being a champion. Yeah. <laughs> They do Queen do a yeah. few of those sorts of songs like We Are the Champion, and they got that that you know I riding my bi- what's the song called Bicycle like it's just a song about riding your bicycle and yeah um and um and car I'm alone in my car you know it's just about driving your car they've got a bunch of yeah. songs just about doing No Cars Go by Arcade Fire yes that's right yes mm. yeah yeah oh this is there's some Jeff there's there's too many songs now. <laughs> This is fun, though. This is fun. It's actually fun, challenging. The other day, uh, my wife and I were driving along and we had a game where we had to, you had to name a song that had the word rain somewhere in it. Oh, yeah. Like, even in the lyrics. And we'd, and that was really fun. It's really fun, like, you know, testing people's music knowledge. And that's basically one of the things you could do here. That's you know, cool. Songs that aren't about love. All right, let me have a go. So, there's Rain by Madonna, Blame It on the Rain by Millie Vanilli. Um, oh yeah. Um, will it? Oh, and I don't never see the rain. It's but it's by. Um, oh yeah. What's his name? The guy with the dark voice. You your dad likes. You know they do the great oh, song from well. Creedence. From Creedence. Yeah, don't yeah, Creedence, Creedence do that song? Name. Yeah. They, I wish it would. I wish it would rain down by Phil Collins. Mm. Um, mm. I can't stand the rain. That's a, a lot of blues songs. Oh, you would have you would have you would have beaten us, Tim. Clearly, there's that other one, Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Yes, of course. Yes, mm. nice. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Raindrops keep falling on your head. Yes. Mm. Incy Wincy Spider is about rain. <laughs> it's about sp- we did we did ve- <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons we veered into quite a few nursery rhymes. <laughs> Incy Wincy Spider, yeah. one, one of the great classic non-love songs. Yeah, so yeah. Really Down <laughs> came the rain. Down came the rain. Yeah. Nursery <laughs> rhymes would be good for some Jeff's idea too, but not many of them are about love. <laughs> the, the old father clock. What is it called? The old man's clock. Um, that's it. That's hickory a, dickory dock. Hickory dickory dock as well. That's right. That's yeah. not about rain though. Yeah. There's quite a few 50s songs mm. about rock and roll and about dancing and stuff that are sort of like that, they are about getting down to your oh, yeah. place. Rock around the clock. Mm, yeah. yeah. Are we doing rain now or are we doing non love songs? We're jumping between them. Yeah. <laughs> the two categories. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Until I think of another rain one, we'll we'll keep it in both yes. <laughs> we'll keep the categories open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you like do you like this idea from some Jeff? Non non love songs? I do think it's a good idea. Mm, I think I think we're done. Thank you very much for that excellent idea. Um some Jeff. Well done, some Jeff. Now, Tim, mm. one of your earlier forecasts was that you would forget the secret words. Well, that's right. We haven't finished yet. No, that's exactly right. All right. No, very good. How mm. am I going to weave these in? Okay. Well, hang on. You you have to name a song that has the secret words in them. Uh, oh, gosh. That's actually mm. going to be... All right. I'm going to have to go to hip hop for one of mm. the songs. Um, a song with the oh. word... Tim's Googling here. Yeah, that's which is kind of cheating, isn't it? Well, no, I think I can do it in... Uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah, no, okay. Um, hmm. Do you remember that song <laughs> by Eddie Murphy called Boogie In Your Butt? <laughs> no. That was, hmm, me neither. In your, butt, put the in, your butt. in your butt, put the boogie in your butt, put the boogie in your butt in your butt. I ain't no put no boogie in nobody's butt. Hang on, is the secret word boogie? No, that would have been a lot uh, easier. Yeah, <laughs> what, it's, is it butt? It's butt. Yes, well done. <laughs> you could have done. I like big butts. I cannot lie. Oh, that's a classic one. Of course, yes, yeah. yes. Baby got uh, back. Gosh, missed an opportunity yeah. there. That's great. Yeah. The other one will be a lot easier, but let me just. Hmm. Um, so easy that I can't think of it and I'm going to like, you know Are you going out on a high this episode? <laughs> okay, so I think I think the honest thing to do is to acknowledge that I've just found myself Googling something I wouldn't, which is songs with the word cheek <laughs> mm. Yeah <laughs> Which of, of which there is a few. There is a song called Cheek to Cheek, which is the Irving Berlin. You probably know that one. As when we're dancing oh, yeah, cheek yeah. to cheek. Yeah. Um, from the film yeah. Top Hat. That's a 1930s song. Uh, so I've managed yeah. to get both words in, butt and cheek, which is just right. li- <laughs> pushing the envelope a little bit there from the youngsters, being a little, yeah. working a little bit blue. But yeah. I'm, 
Bit naughty. Mm, bit, na- <laughs> bit, bit, bit naughty, but mm. they got in. Someone surely can you take those two words and then take our invitation from earlier to create a um, a wrap in the middle and, and see if they can combine the two. An interlude wrap for our podcast, which hmm. incorporates the words butt cheek. All right. I'll get I'll go here. I'll get hold of Rich and see what he's got. <laughs> jam, jam, here comes the man. I got a message from the Milo man. I need another unmade rap. This time could it be about but shake me, but 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 shake, but shake me, but I'll get, I'll go ahead. I'll get hold of Rich and see what he's got. <laughs> <laughs>